Hey, 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 good morning. It's pretty early in the morning here too. But hey, I was digging through some of my junk and I found a copy of the Machinery Journal. And this is from uh, May of 1998. I don't think it lasted very long after this, you know, the internet took off. But this, this had all the machine tool dealers and stuff in it. And back in those days, you kind of, uh, if you're buying machine, we had more contact with uh, these guys and uh, could learn a few tricks. And uh, the machine tool dealers would uh, run into machines, you know, like uh, lathes and things that have uh, a broken gear. And you'd have to remove the spindle. And you got, this is uh, something that may be lost. I, I, a lot of people don't even think about this, but this is critical. If you have to take apart a Timken bearing spindle, whether it's a dividing head or um, uh, a vertical head like this, uh, there's something very important you got to do. And I'm going to show you that real quick here. I'll get the camera down here. And uh, hopefully I'll, I won't miss anything and be able to, uh, let me get my Sharpies down for, okay, I need a Sharpie. And the, and the top won't come up. <clears throat> it's a Magnum. <laughs> you know, they're a little loose here. Okay, now the spindles are like this. This is uh, a couple of Timken bearings. Um, on a holder here. So, uh, like on a lathe or something, it's just like this, but the Timken bearings will probably be further apart or they might be in groups close together. So, this would load at this nut. Let me take that off. Now, for any reason, if you have to remove a, a Timken bearing spindle, Oh, that's a long-winded one. This is what you must do. You're going to knock the shaft out of the rear bearing, okay? And so uh, you'll take and mark this thing. You'll mark the shaft, okay? Then you have to come in and mark the inner race of that back bearing. If you don't do that, it'll be very likely that you won't get it back together and it'll run true. This, this, it's best not to disturb these kind of bearings. Okay, so you knock the shaft out and the, and the, this bearing comes loose. And when you put it back, see you got it indexed, and you can put it back. The race stays in the casting, and the front race stays in the casting too. And then you knock this part off. Let's say this is the spindle and where the chuck goes. Do not remove this bearing to clean it. And I would suggest not moving that bearing at all. But if for some reason you do, index that bearing too, okay? And uh, <laughs> hopefully you won't be removing these races. But the one thing you must, uh, on ball bearings or these, you must be aware, if you do knock these races out, be sure to index them with the casting, like your headstock, because you may find high spots with marks. There'll be a little dot, and that'll be a high spot. And you'll want to return that high spot to where it was. You won't probably be able to see the high spots on ball bearings or Timken bearings, precision ones. So you want to index it where you can see it, and uh, with like a paint mark, it's better than a Sharpie. Then find out where the actual uh, bearing manufacturer's high spots are and return them to in place. 
okay, with the new parents or the old parents. And that'll get you closer to uh, the, the spindle running true again, okay? And uh, these, uh, um, Timken spindles um, are, are really common and uh, they're really quite accurate. But Timken bearings aren't as accurate as ball bearings. So when they make these spindles, they'll assemble them the most accurate way possible. And they have like uh, shaft field machines that show the profile of their shafts and stuff. And they'll juggle any high spots that the manufacturers put, you know. They'll put a high spot and a low spot in their uh, errors in manufacturing. And that happens quite often. So if you're taking apart a, a, a grinder spindle or any other kind of spindle, you really want to mark the bearings, you know, as you take them apart. And then from those marks, you can observe any uh, high spots that the manufacturer may have, uh, you know, installed. I hope that makes some kind of sense. And uh, that way you can get your spindles back together closer. Now, the, uh, uh, I have a bit of experience with spindles, but I'm not uh, uh, like a professional spindle builder that does that every day. And uh, that's quite a job, and they have all the equipment, they run them in, they, they have, uh, you know, test them for noise, test them for heat, and all that. But uh, that's very expensive, and there's a reason for that, because it's a lot of work. And uh, when you're um, doing this stuff yourself, you know, you can't afford that kind of, um, you know, your home shop and stuff like that. You can't afford that kind of service. So uh, you just kind of have to do what you got to do. And uh, an interesting thing, uh, you can make your own spindles if, if you're real careful and uh, get them round and stuff like that. And I want to point out that uh, this uh, World War II uh, uh, milling machine has got a uh, really deluxe uh, uh, vertical head with a quill that moves only a couple of inches, but I tell you, that's nice. But the spindling this is not heat treated it's soft steel and uh, i have to be careful with it and uh, it it was previously slightly damaged and i had to scrape the damage out of it but uh, unless you can re-grind uh, the spindles you want to do everything you can uh, not to take them apart and uh, like a monarch on their Timken bearing spindles, and I believe the EE, I'm not sure. Uh, they'll take a hard crumb, this, uh, a used spindle, and uh, then re totally re grind it new to uh, fit. And uh, that's a very expensive <laughs> situation. I would imagine that'd at least be 10,000 bucks. And uh, Timken bearings, the precision ones, type zero, are astronomically expensive these days. So whatever you do, try not to take the uh, Timken bearings or uh, any spindle part, if you possibly can. Like uh, on this dividing head here, I, uh, uh, you can see pictures of it in the scrapyard, and it's just totally rusted. And the spindle's great. It's a Timken bearing spindle, two Timken bearings, and uh, I did not take it apart. I pumped two tubes of grease through this thing and pushed the uh, old uh, grease and dirt out, and it worked out. And this thing was really true. I'm chewing up this. Uh, import uh, uh, collet chuck, which is really working uh, quite well for me. And I did the same to this spindle here. This is a, a grease pack spindle. It, 
you could see in those uh, junkyard photos and stuff that this was uh, um, um, uh, rusty and got water uh, in it. <laughs> And I, and I pumped a couple of tubes of grease out, and this worked out, you know. Didn't have to take it apart. So, anyway, that's, uh, I, I wanted to mention that. And uh, I'll talk a little bit later about, uh, you know, adjustments and stuff like that on these kind of spindles. I've, uh, I learned a lot from these dealers, and, um, yeah. <laughs> It, uh, it, it's not rocket science or anything, but you don't want to overdo stuff, okay? I hope this is kind of helpful, and I hope you have a great day. I, I got all kinds of things uh, going, and uh, I got to get on those other misalignment shafts, too. Okay, you guys have a good day, and I hope everybody's doing good. Bye-bye.